Hello. I pray you are well today. I want to thank Chuck Tassler for doing the devotion yesterday. Right after we recorded Sunday morning service and before I had the opportunity to record this, I received the sad news that my brother David had left this life and gone to eternity. He had a blood clot and he, even though they called the ambulance, he died in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. I want to ask you first and foremost to pray for Tony, that's his wife, and for Naomi and for Luke, his children. There's something about uh, the unexpected. There's something about he was only 60 years old. Uh, there's something about the reality that another one you love is in eternal life. If you'll allow me, this is my brother David. This is us when we were little. This is us when we were older. Here's David with my kids, my family. Here's the three brothers. And probably more logically, here's the three brothers. Here's David with his family his wife and children a couple of years ago now. And here's a picture of my brother. I'm, it's hard for me to actually comprehend that I'm saying to you that David Schrank is in heaven. He went to heaven yesterday. He would send me um, emails along with many of you if you knew him well. And you can see that Schranks have lots of words, right? But let me, let me share with some of those words with you where it uses this language. With my eyes not on the prize, I can let the troubles of this world and the troubles of other people in life hurt my relationship in peace with Abba Father. My own love can grow cold because the chaos and lives of those around me. All the care of this world can steal my peace and joy when they may not grow to full fruit. Darkness and wickedness could come and steal and destroy, which is God's trying to build in my life. What can I change my mind about and repent of in regards to how much trouble and chaos I let into my heart and life? Can I change the way I take on other people's troubles as if they were my own and not pay a price? Can I own what's up to me to give and keep my loving from going cold? Can I be more direct about loving and inviting others to put put their part in keeping peace and asking them to repent and consider changing their minds about actions and seeking God's help. In all this, I see lots of chances for me to change my mind and repent of things that will help me find the present kingdom of heaven that Jesus speaks of that is with me right now. My willingness to experience his kingdom is available, experienced through a process of repentance, a renewal of mind and heart, and the results are testable and tasteable. Come, Lord Jesus, come. More, Jesus, more. It was classic, my brother David, as he would write. And I, I say to you, please pray. There's just something about it. Maybe you haven't experienced this yet. When my mom passed away, it was a certain kind of grief. I've been a pastor for over 30 years, but it's a certain kind of grief. And now there's a different kind of grief where somebody who grew up in the same home, somebody who lived the same life, Somebody you love is now in eternal life. Heaven seems closer to me today, not just because of the fragility of life, but because David is there. To Tony and Naomi and Luke, I give this tribute to your husband and father who loved you so very much without question and loved Jesus so very much without question and I am just shocked and surprised that this has happened yesterday. To the rest of my family and those who knew David, we were privileged to know someone who God led in his life, who God granted grace to, who God granted a heart and an and a openness to want to share and be an encourager and one who would share joy. I thank you for this privilege of just sharing a tribute to say,
David Trank is in heaven. As much as that is a cutting feeling, it is also a joyful feeling that he is now in the fullness of joy, the fullness of joy. God bless you today. For those that grieve, we grieve in the confidence that, that absent from the body is present with the Lord, that Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Whoever lives by believing in me will never die. David is now outside of tear and sorrow and pain. We are having tear and sorrow and pain. He's having the fullness of joy. My heart breaks, but I pray, please, please pray for Tony and Naomi and Luke. Please pray for them at this time. Lord God, we do give you thanks for David's life. We thank you that you've intertwined us with people in our life. My brother, I give you thanks for him. I thank you for his love for his wife and children, and I pray for them deeply today. I pray for the hole that is left in all of our lives, the unexpected hole of a 60-year-old leaving this life in just a brief short of time. I ask you to bless us with a confidence of faith that we too will see you face to face one day and see all those we love in eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. I like to believe and understand that David is not just in my past, he is also in my future. He's also in eternity, where I too will be one day and where you too would be one day by trusting Christ. Thank you. God bless you.